Greetings, my name is Tanya Woodworth and I thank you for joining me for this webinar today. Um, I am a freelance editor and literary consultant and today's topic is five tips for self-publishing authors. Uh, so let's get started. I am going to uh, share my desktop with you today. Uh, you're looking at a slideshow of five self-publishing tips for authors. Ernest Hemingway once said, there is no rule on how to write. Sometimes it comes easily and perfectly. Sometimes it's like drilling rock and then blasting out with charges. In publishing, this same notion applies. Traditional publishers and big box stores have had tremendous control over the types of content shared with the public, but now, thanks to the digital revolution, authors can finally take control of their writing career. To help guide you through this process, I have put together five self-publishing tips that I hope you find particularly useful throughout your publishing journey. For my first tip, we will discuss some editing essentials that I hope you will find quite useful. Uh, key elements in a press kit, as well as social networking etiquette, platform building techniques, and tips for hiring a publicist. In editing essentials, we have three basic types of proofreading. The first one is uh, developmental editing. The next stage is copy editing, and the final stage is your standard proofread. If you decide to hire a developmental editor, they will aid in character development, flag content for further developments, flag content that may require you to gather permissions, mark unrelated content for deletion, and provide a basic back check. If you decide to hire a copy editor, the copy editor will correct grammar, spelling, punctuation, and word choices, correct easy to find factual errors, flag content that may require permissions, mark unrelated content for deletion, and correct sentence structure. If you decide to hire a proofreader, he or she will correct punctuation and spelling, Correct obvious grammatical errors, check, for running, check your running heads, cross-reference page numbers, and flag design or layout errors. One of the main essentials um, to make your manuscript to really have that look and feel of a professionally edited manuscript, you'll want to purchase or create an account with the Chicago Manual of Style, 16th edition. We are going to go ahead and take a look at the website now. This is the basic website for the Chicago Manual of Style, and I'm going to log in just to so show you some of the features. On this, in this um, book, well, this is an online reference, but the actual physical manual has all the same features as well. Um, in here, you can check your basic punctuation, grammar, um, and it also thoroughly explains the whole editing process from start to finish. Um, you can check numerous, numerous things, and there's also a Q&A if you have any questions. You can actually contact them if you decide to choose the online portion. Oops, sorry about that. Having some technical error difficulty here. <clears throat> now we're going to look at the key elements in a press kit. To start with, you'll want to gather a professionally um, taken headshot. Uh, it has to be professional. You don't want to just, you know, take a selfie from your digital camera. You know, pu publishers, you know, um, 
newspapers, TV stations, they don't want that. They want a professional headshot that they can share with their readers. You'll also want to gather a short bio of yourself. The goal is three paragraphs. Next, you'll want to provide a list of frequently asked questions that a journalist might ask you if they were to interview you. Um, this basically, you know, gives them, you know, um, quick references to look up um, when they're in a pinch. You know, they're on extremely large deadlines on a daily basis, and they don't have time to, you know, contact everybody and thoroughly vet their research avenues that they need to take. So if you can provide them with some quick questions and answers, then they have you have a better shot of getting that interview that you need to um, get your yourself promoted and get your book out there. Uh, the next element that you'll want to include is any media coverage that you've had along with some press releases that um, you have sent out to the media. I'm going to show you a, a press kit now from author J.K. Rowling. Her uh, website is pretty elaborate. I don't expect any of you to go to such extremes, but you know, if you can, it would be nice. If you notice at the bottom of the screen here, she has a little button that says Media Kit, and you press on that. It takes you to the two main elements that we just talked about, your biography as well as your official uh, image or portrait. Hers opens up to a, a separate document for the news organizations to download. And then her bio does the same thing. Her bio is a lot longer than the traditional bio, but again, she's JK Rowling and um, her platform is pretty extensive. So, other elements that you'll want to include in your press kit will be any interviews that you might have had, um, any video footage that you have online of yourself. You notice here she has you know, news articles, TV appearances, um, latest news on her upcoming books, um, awards. You'll definitely want to include any awards that you have received. Okay, now we'll go back to this, the slide. I also want to show you, let's see if I saved it here, um, a service that we have called Pitch Engine. Pitch Engine allows you to do electronic press kits that are extremely helpful to the media. If you notice here, we have one created for Miami Book Fair International. Uh, they have this standard press release on the left hand column. All the, you know, well um, created images. Um, you know, that the journalists might decide to use in their article. And then down here you have what we call, um, that's the, the part of your electronic press kit, you have your B-roll and then you have standard interviews from two of the, the ladies that actually work for the book fair. And the press can use this to create their news stories. And then here we have the quick facts that we just discussed. Okay, next we will talk about social networking etiquette. My main uh, pet peeve when it comes to social networking is when authors decide to sell, 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 sell. You do not want to sell your book. Otherwise, you risk the chance of looking like the snake oil salesman, and nobody wants that. People are not going to buy your book if you pressure them to sell something that they're not familiar with or they don't even know anything about. So what you really need to do is you know, to watch your P's and Q's. Uh, you want to say please and thank you to anybody that you come in contact with online. I mean, you, know, you can't physically you know, provide them with a handshake, but you can be courteous in all of your messaging tactics. Apologize. Uh, next, um, I want you to be able to provide your target audience with some value. Again, you don't want to ask them to purchase your book. You want to give them 
incentive to come and research you and find out the product that you're offering. Now you have to ask yourself, what has value? Typically, when we talk about value, we talk about money. But in this case, I'm sure that you're not going to be bribing your customers to purchase your book with money. You need to find an element about your story or about yourself that is unique. What makes your story stand out above everyone else's in the marketplace? You can give away um, gifts or, or um, awards to your readers. But don't give away too much. You just want to give them a quick glimpse of, of your, your story, bits and pieces. Maybe you want to give them a sample chapter, or if you're a self-help author, you give them one self-help tip within an article that's in your book. But you don't want to give away the whole thing, because if you give away the whole thing, what's the point? Why are they going to purchase your book? Uh, next, uh, we are going to talk about platform building techniques. The number one platform building technique that you're going to want to focus on is writing. You need to continue to write no matter what. The more material that you've had written, the, the larger your platform will become. You can do this as a guest blogger on somebody else's website. Or you can build your own website. And this is my platform building technique number two. You must build your own website. If you look online, any successful author, whether they've had their publishers created or they've created themselves, they have their own website. This is crucial for building your target audience and getting the information out there. I highly recommend that you consider WordPress.com, and we're going to take a quick look at their website right now. WordPress.com offers a plethora of themes that you can choose from. They're already pre-made. You don't have to, you know, know any code, um, you know, HTML, stuff like that. They're basically, you know, click, write, and go. Everything is, is very simplistic, and they have some paid ones, but many of them are free. As you can see, there's just tons to choose from. They also have customer support if you have any questions. And the forums I have found quite helpful in creating my own website. Um, if, you, if you have a glitch or something that you just you don't know how to work out, you type in a question and they, they pop up. You know, a lot of the other customers have had similar issues. Next, we are going to talk about building your networks. There are tons of ways to do this, but first and foremost, you need to remember that you are not the only fish in the sea. As authors, sometimes we tend to hide away from the rest of the world and we focus on our writing. We have, you know, like tunnel vision and we just look at our computers and we type away and we forget the entire world out there actually exists. And so that type of mindset can really make us struggle with the whole networking uh, situation. There are multiple ways to network. Um, traditionally, in the past, you, you would go to speaking engagements, you would go to networking events, um, you, you would meet people out just on your daily routines, whether it's at the shopping market or, or at, at a pub, um, there, at a local fair. There are millions of ways outside of the digital age to meet people. But as an author in today's world, with the te way technology is, you're really going to want to focus your efforts on social media. That is the quickest um, and most advantageous way to reach your target market. You don't have to physically be in the same room or in the same city or the same town or the same state or the same country even. You can reach your target audience on a larger scale. My platform building technique number four Become an expert. It is extremely critical for you to become an expert on what you have written. Uh, they don't say, you know, write what you know for nothing. People, they don't, they don't want to hear, you know, advice for somebody that they don't feel is an expert on that topic. They're going to say, well, why do I have to listen to you? How do I know that that I can trust you? You need to build trustworthiness as an expert. 
a lot of um, in traditional publishing, a lot of the books, especially the health and fitness sector, you'll notice they've been written by doctors. There's a reason for this. You know, they've done extensive research and um, education on on the topics that they've written about, and and we trust their knowledge and their experience. So you need to you know hone that in and and do that for yourself uh, with your own topic and whatever book that you are exploring. Platform building technique number five, start speaking. This is a great way to build your target audience, um, to get you out in the world as an expert. As a public speaker, people are looking to you and you're building that platform. You're, you know, you're saying they're up on the stage and they're going to say this person must know what they're talking about if they're invited to this event to speak about it. Your credibility is instant in, in that regard. Um, the next tip, um, next platform building technique is to engage with your audience. Uh, there's so many people that they go on social media and they just sell, 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 sell. Um, unfortunately, they, they don't engage you know, with, with their audience. They're not interested in what their audience is doing or how their lives are going. And, and because there's no rapport being built, um, you know, they, they essentially lose the target audience. So be interested in what they're doing. Don't just, you know, sell your book all the time to your market. Make sure that you, you know, mix in some regular social engagement with your target audience. Let them know that you're a real person and not just somebody that's marketing to them and, and all focused on your topic. You know, they, they, they want to know that you care. Um, next, I want you to solicit endorsements. If you know Paris Hilton, and and she's an expert on the book that you're writing, maybe it's How to Be a Celebrity. Um, you know, see if she will write an endorsement for your book. Um, endorsements go a long way. There, there's a reason why you know advertisers, especially television advertisers, use celebrities to sell their products. You know, they build, they already have a built-in fan base. They have credibility, and when you tap into their um, credibility and fan base that instantaneously expands yours. My next slide here is uh, tips for hiring a publicist. Um, I have two main tips that I want to focus on today. There are many more um, that we could talk about, but I want to highlight these two. They're extremely important. Um, Whoever you hire, that person has to be technologically savvy, meaning they have to know how to build your brand online. This is where the market is going. You know, if you've been watching the news, book publishing sales have crumbled, and the ebooks have really, you know, the numbers in ebook sales have grown on a, on a massive scale, and that is because. Um, uh, the technology is easy to use, you know, you don't have to go to the store, there's, there's millions of reasons why. But, you know, if you find somebody, a publicist, that, that can sell your brand, they know all about the social networks and they can really, you know, navigate those networks, your book can potentially sell um, a lot more than if you hire somebody that has never touched a computer a day in their life and they're just, you know, into the old school press releases. Um, yeah, and um, book signings because many companies are, are doing away with book signings. Clo stores are closing and um, that's not really the way that, you know the market is going. Everything is really going digital. They're going online. Uh, so that is like the number one um, tip that I have for you if you're going to hire publicists. They have to be technologically savvy. And, and the next, they have to love books. Um, they have to know the market. They have to be uh, well adverse in how the process works. Somebody that works in the hospitality industry as a publicist, no matter how successful they are in that arena, they are not going to know how to properly market your book or when to start the marketing process um, and, and, and the, build the publicity that you need to sell. Uh, so those two are just extremely critical. If you walk away from anything throughout this entire presentation, just, just remember that the person that you choose to hire to work with you, they, they have to be passionate about their job and the work and their books. They have to know what they're doing in this industry. Um, I thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to message me.
<clears throat> if you want to connect with me um, on Twitter, my handle is at Tanya Woodworth. You can also check out my website for further information, tanyawoodworth.com. I am now going to open up the questions. Uh, feel free to send me any questions. And it looks like we don't have any questions right now. Um, or we're having some technical difficulties, I apologize. Um, again, email me um, on my website, tanywoodworth.com, um, link to my handle, um, at Tanya Woodworth on Twitter, and I will be happy to answer any of your questions. Thank you for joining me.